was a totally different era and lifestyle when I was growing up compared to what little girls of today experience. I didn't have television to watch or iPads to play with or soccer games or swimming or dance lessons to go to. Instead, there were dolls and doll buggies, dishes and other things to play house with. We wanted to do things just like our mother did. Glass companies came to the rescue over 160 years ago when they started producing toy glass items for children. They made toy items just like Mother used to use every day in the kitchen, and even fancy dishes used only for company or to sit around and look pretty. Many of the items were made in the same patterns as Mother's dishes. We had a lot of fun imitating our mothers, and it was even more fun if we had sisters, cousins, or friends to play with. Toy glass items were made with the intention of children playing with them and were often broken and then discarded. For this reason, not a lot of time or workmanship went into the items. These small items were usually made at the end of a batch of glass to use it up rather than not having enough to make a larger item, thus wasting the glass. Edges and seams were usually rough and it didn't matter if items had bubbles in the glass. The Sandwich Glass Company of Massachusetts was the first to make toy glass as early as the 1830s or 40s. It was about the time Sandwich closed in 1888 that other American companies began in earnest to make toy glass items for little girls. The first toy items made by Sandwich were in the lacy pattern. Do you know why they made lacy glass? Well, they used the stipples to hide the many imperfections in the glass. Later, they made a panel style. If you were to read the names of all the glass factories from the mid-1850s until the 1940s, it would appear there were a great number of them, but in reality, there were just over 30 that made toy glass. The reason it seemed like a lot more was the fact that glass factories changed their name and ownership about as often as some people change their underwear. Take, for example, the Bryce brothers. Over the years, there were nine Bryce relatives involved in the glass industry, several of whom started companies. Plus, at different times in their history, they may have received financial backing from people who wanted their name included in the company name. It started as Bryce McKee and Company in 1850, in Birmingham, Pennsylvania, then Bryce Walker and Company, and later Bryce Brothers until 1891, when it came under the U.S. Glass Company and was known as Factory B. Shortly thereafter, a second generation of Bryce's, Andrew and James, resumed operations in a plant in Hammondsville, Pennsylvania, making only blown glass. In 1896, they opened a new plant in Mount Pleasant, Pennsylvania, that remained in operation until it was sold in 1965 to Lennox Crystal. Back in 1879, John P. and Charles Bryce joined with J.B. Higby to form Bryce, Higby & Company that operated until 1907 when destroyed by a flood. John Higby then started J.B. Higby Company in Bridgeville, Pennsylvania, and stayed in business until 1918. The companies I've just mentioned made a large percentage of all of the children's toy glassware. So listen for them as I show you examples. Major production of children's toy dishes occurred from the 1890s to around 1930, of clear pressed glass with very little colored glass produced. Colors used were amber, green, and blue in some canary. Chocolate glass was very rare with only two companies using it in toy table sets. Most toy dishes were produced and sold in sets. Table sets, water sets, punch sets, and berry sets. As I said earlier, Sandwich Glass Company was the first to make children's toy items. They made footed goblets, compotes, bowl and pitcher sets, covered dishes, terrines, creamers, and various other bowls and plates, ranging in size from one and a half to two and one eighth inches in their lacy pattern. The stipples in this pattern were designed to cover up minor flaws in their early glass. 
When the lacy glass went out of style, they produced some panel pieces from 1872 until the factory closed in 1888. These included goblets, tumblers, spooners, bowl and pitcher sets, and cups and saucers. Table sets were the most widely produced children's glass items and came in the most patterns, about 60. The table set included a covered butter dish, creamer, covered sugar, and spooner. As the name implies, this set was kept on the table most of the time, so it would be handy as almost everyone put cream and sugar in their coffee or tea. This is the Amazon or sawtooth mitered glass. It has a jagged rim on all pieces except a spooner. It was made by Bryce Brothers as early as 1854 and after 1891 by U.S. Glass Company. Pennsylvania pattern was made of clear glass with gold rims. It was made by U.S. Glass Company in 1898. Wild Rose is made of heavy white milk glass with a raised design. Some pieces have splashes of various colors. Attributed to the U.S. Glass Company circa 1900, I call this the ugly duckling. Arrowhead and Ovals, or Style, was made by Bryce Higby Company in 1907 and later by J.B. Higby Company, first called Medora, also called Style. Bead and Scroll by U.S. Glass Company was made in the early 1900s. All except the butter have an irregular shaped base. Missing is the covered sugar. Nursery Rhyme, also by U.S. Glass Company, was made from 1908 to 1917. One of the few companies to make all four sets. Nursery Rhyme is part of the Wabash series. Drum is uniquely shaped set with the butter and sugar lids having a cannon finial. It was made by Bryce, Higby & Company in the 1880s, then J.B. Higby from 1907 to 1918. The designer left his mark on the bottom of each piece with six stippled lines across the butter and five on the other three pieces. Menagerie is one of the most interesting table sets. The butter is a turtle, the creamer is an owl, the sugar is a bear, and the spooner is a fish. It's also unusual that it came in several colors, clear, old gold, blue, and amber. It was made by Bryce, Higby & Company in 1885. Hawaiian Lei is by the J.B. Higby Company, made in clear glass from the 1890s to 1900. Many of the original pieces have a B with the letters H-I-G on the wings and body. This is the Higby B mark, only used on Hawaiian Lei. These patterns are all from the Bryce Higby group, and these aren't all of them. The first one we're looking at is Grapevine with Ovals, made by McKee in the 1870s, making it one of the oldest toy sets, and it is also the smallest. What's missing is the spooner. The lion first appeared at the Philadelphia Centennial in 1876, made by Gillander and Sons. Some sets have frosted lions, and there's an all-frosted one. Mardi Gras, or D&M No. 42, was made by Duncan and Miller in the 1890s. It was actually a five-piece set having a honey jug with it, which I've never seen. Sawtooth Band No. 1225 is the only child's table set made by Heise circa 1898. Some pieces can be found in ruby flash as souvenir pieces. Lamb was made from 1890 to 1910. I'm not sure which company made it first, but at some point, Imperial had the molds for it. Its lamb finial makes it interesting, and it was produced in clear, doe skin, and white milk glass, with the last two being quite rare. Thumbelina, or flattened diamond, was made by Westmoreland in 1890 in clear only. In 1950, a three-piece white milk glass set with no spooner was made until about 1960, 
when they brought back the four-piece set in amber, blue, and green, with some having opalescent edges. Thumbelina was again reissued in the early 1980s, shortly before the company closed. Colonial, or number 2630, by Cambridge Glass Company, was one of the few sets that came in colors, cobalt and green, plus clear. Very difficult to complete a green set as the green varied in coloration. This is circa 1900 to 1909. Rex, or Fancy Cut, was made by Cooperative Flint Glass in 1911. They also made the punch and water sets. Tulips and Honeycomb from the Wabash Toy Series was made by Federal Glass Company in 1914. It comes with either a large or small butter, small butter is more rare, plus open and covered bowls in this pattern. The glass is quite murky. There are about 20 patterns of water sets. This is the padded cross pattern made by U.S. Glass in the 1890s. Francis Ware number 323 was made in 1891 by Hobbs, Braconnier and Company, and they came in blue Vaseline, crystal and frosted crystal, and the crystal pieces may be trimmed in red or amber. It can also be found in Rubina, frosted or clear. The Hobbs are the most pronounced of any children's sets. The Oval Star or Crystal Number 399 set includes a pitcher, six glasses, and a tray, and it's only one of three sets that did. It's a common pattern, but the tray is difficult to find and it's expensive. It's made by the Indiana Glass Factory in 1900 and again in 1920. The water set with tray sold for 65 cents in the 1927 to 1930 Sears, Roebuck, and, Co and Company catalog. This is the Rex or Fancy Cut by Cooperative Glass Company from 1911. Nursery rhyme pitcher depicts a seesaw and the tumbler a boy with a hoop and dog. This was by the U.S. Glass Company 1908 to 1919 in clear glass. The Monk Stein set of a heavy white milk glass by U.S. Glass comes from the early 1890s. Some sets have a single color smeared over the raised design in pink, green, red, blue, matte silver, or gold. It's also sold in clear, but that was rare. In 1914, a seven-piece set sold for 92 cents a dozen wholesale. Next, we're going to look at punch sets. There were about 12 to 15 patterns. This is the Thumbelina or Flattened Diamond set. It was also called Sunburst, Pineapple and Fan, or Strawberry and Fan. These sets were made in 1890. Westmoreland has reissued this pattern several times in many colors, such as this red carnival set. The last one was in 1982 for their anniversary line with pieces well marked. It has widely been reproduced since Westmoreland closed in 1985. This is the nursery rhyme by U.S. Glass Company. They were made in 1908 to 1919. The Wheat Sheaf number 500 by Cambridge Glass Company was made in 1910. The set sold for $2.90 a dozen wholesale. All four sets of tulips and honeycomb, which were made by Federal Glass Company of Ohio from 1900 to 1914. This is wild rose in a heavy milk glass. It was very poorly made with lots of sharp edges. It was made by U.S. Glass Company in 1900. This is Whirligig number 15101 or Buzz Star made by U.S. Glass in the 1970s. The punch bowl is actually Imperial Glass Company compote mold, thus the taller pedestal, but the cups are from a U.S. Glass Company mold. There were about 12 to 15 patterns of berry sets. The master berry bowl could be from the same mold as the adult size individual berry bowl, and the toy berry bowls from a salt dip mold. Patty cross pattern, was made by several companies in the late 1800s 
to early 1900s. Two of these companies were Richards and Hartley and Bryce Brothers. A 1910 Butler Brothers catalog showed a dozen berry sets selling for $2.20 wholesale. The Lazy Daisy was made by U.S. Glass Company in the early 1900s and later by Westmoreland, who put a W on the small berries, a very common pattern and only made in the berry set. The Oval Star or Crystal Number 300 by Indiana Glass was made in 1920, and it's a very common set. Wheat Sheaf Number 500 by Cambridge Glass Company. This is quite an elegant pattern. Now we are going to look at some individual small items. Here are some candlesticks. One pair, the crystal with round base, is three and three quarters inches. The pair of white milk glass made in France is three and a half inches. The pair of clear with swirl base is two and one eighth inches. The three stem clear with plain round base are two and seven eighth inches. Next, we are going to look at chamber sticks. You can see a pair of crystal chamber sticks. Those are the ones that have the candles in them. And then in the top center, you see a blue milk glass swirl chamber stick. That's two inches. And then in the front, you see a pair of clear chamber sticks. And they were all called Imperial by Lennox. These are cobalt with clear prisms with shell-shaped bases. There's also a pair of clear candlesticks with a hexagon base and five short candlesticks. Next, we're going to look at condiment sets. On the left side of the slide, you can see um, a clear cruet shaker and salt dip in an acorn-shaped tray. This was made by Hickman. In the center is a blue milk glass. It's a salt, pepper, and sugar with tray. And then on the right, you see a white milk glass. That's also a cruet, shaker, and salt dip. This is a caster set called Fancy Ring. It has a rose bowl, a honey dish with a cable and wheel pattern, a relish dish that's in a Kenneth pattern, this is Epernay. This is a Bristol glass with ruffled edges. It has gold trim with enamel flowers. These are cake stands or plates. The first one is Hawaiian Lei or Gala pattern by Higby Company in the 1900s. The next are American Beauty Rose, Arrowhead and Ovals or Style, three and a quarter inches tall, by Higby Company in the 1900s. And the last is Baby Thumbprint cake stand that's only two inches. These are banana stands. On the left hand side, you see little ladders, which is on a pedestal five and a quarter inches. Next is Roanoke Star. That's in the top middle. Then on the right hand side is Beautiful Lady, and that's on a pedestal in clear glass by Bryce Higby, 1890 and 1905. And finally, on the bottom, you see fine cut star and fan. And that is a great boat made by Bryce Higby, 1902 and J.B. Higby, 1907. These are ice cream items. There's an ice cream set by Federal Glass of Columbus, Ohio, part of a Wabash series, a platter, and four plates with a dish of ice cream in the center and alphabet round the edge. There's also a fish set that matches this with, with an ice cream cone holder, Viking glass 1900, and ice cream soda glasses. These are lemonade pitchers. All would have had glasses with them. Two ruffled are a daisy pattern and the tankard is a lily of the valley pattern. These are bride's baskets. On the left hand side is a teal blue with Vaseline ruffled edge in a metal stand. On the right is a clear glass with molded daisy design that's hand painted. It has a braided wire handle, possibly made by Fenton. 
This is a tumble up. It's a blue pitcher with an acid etched design. It's made in Czechoslovakia, 1922 to 1937. These three pieces are tumble ups. On the far left is a Moser gold over cranberry glass with enamel painted floral design. Then there's a pink, pink cased glass with gold enameling, probably French, late 1800s to early 1900s. And then on the right is a clear glass with a delicate floral enamel design. These are more tumble ups. On the left hand side is a clear glass piece with coralline floral design that was made in the 1890s. In the center is a cobalt pitcher made by Fenton for Doris Leckler. That was made in the early 1980s. And on the right hand side is a piece that is clear glass. It's etched and wheel cut. These are more tumble ups. On the left hand side is a depression style with red, yellow and blue bands. That was made from 1940 to 1950. In the center is a ruby flash bohemian style. That was cut and, and acid etched and that was made in the 1880s. And on the right hand side is an opaline with gold bands and that was made in the 1890s. This is a tea set, a teapot with four cups and a tray and it's done in plique a jour, a technique where transparent enamels are poured into honeycomb pattern wires with an effect similar to stained glass. It was made in China early to mid 1800s. This is a wine decanter set, a decanter with four stemmed glasses and a tray and ruby finished glass with a design in gold. This is a pickle caster, a ruby red glass insert in a silver plated frame, very rare. There are reproduction companies or ones that are making new glass items. AA Importing is a company that I don't like as they are deceptive. They buy molds from companies that have closed and if there are marks, they leave them and never use their own mark. They have been doing this since 1975. A second company, Moser, makes reproductions or new glass items in the depression style and a few from early molds. They term them as miniature glass, not toy glass. Hawaiian lei is being made by Moser with the B, B mark and no letters in the B, and they come in a variety of colors. Quite often there is an M on the bottom. I do like their cherry thumbprint pattern, which also comes in a purple, blue, carnival glass, and clear, and then they also make it in a grape pattern. Moser also makes an inverted strawberry, which is lovely, in this pale green opaque glass. These are good quality glass items. Boyd has made the lamb four-piece table set since 1985, but clearly marked with a B inside of diamond. One nice thing is that Boyd never uses colors produced by the original company and removes any old company marks. This Boyd lamb table set is in chocolate glass. Fenton made a series of limited edition miniature sets or individual pieces in the 1990s. The table set pattern is English Daisy. They limited it to 1500. Very, they're very nice quality items and a good addition to a toy glass collection. This concludes my presentation. Thank you for your attention.